Hello, you are very welcome to this special edition of the Under Centre podcast. Dara here with you and we have a special interview coming your way this week. We're delighted to welcome on Sam Potter. He is the ex-Belfast Knight lineman, of course, who is over currently with the University of Nottingham, but will be heading over to Sweden to play for Orbro Black Knights this summer. Uh, Sam, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? Thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Excellent stuff, excellent stuff. So, Orbro Black Knights, uh, heading over to Sweden. First of all, where what part of Sweden is that in? It's uh, it's, it's like the middle of Sweden, uh, about two hours away from Stockholm on the train. Okay, okay. So you're going to so it's a bit of a bit of a trek to get to there for sure when you're getting off the uh, plane. Yeah, it is. Um, probably all day it's going to take i'm actually a connection flight to trying to get those hectic but you know we do what we, we do what we got to do yeah uh so tell me how um how did it come about that uh orbro contacted you and uh wanted you to be part of their program um it's just on the euro players website um obviously i've made a profile and put my highlight tip up and then over christmas i spent a lot of time just like trying to get my name out there and then sam the head coach Email me one day, and then we just got on video calls and um, talked for about maybe a month or something. Um, and then he offered me a offered me a contract, and I couldn't say no. It was a perfect situation for me. Excellent stuff. Uh, and you know how does how does it work then um, when it comes to, to heading over uh, and to playing with them? Uh, have you actually had a chance to visit yet, or is that all still to come? No, nah, I've never actually been there, but um, we're on weekly Zoom meetings, um, talking about playbook stuff, talking about um, how it's going to go. Um, I know all my roommates already, so everything's set, ready for me to get there and just start playing ball. Yeah, okay. Um, and we were speaking a little off air about that. You're looking at around, was it April time before you, uh, you head over? Yeah, end of this month until probably mid-July, end of July, so five months. Right, so I guess the lads at the Knights are not happy with that time frame for sure, so there'll be no no chance of a uh, no chance of a, a, a Sam Potter sighting at a game. Unfortunately, not playing no, at least, ne- anyway. We, you never know, you never know. But it doesn't <laughs> look like it for the season. If you have a weekend off, I'm sure you might go and visit to watch oh, cool. the game. But I'm sure, I'm sure your your new employers would absolutely rule out any chance of you going to play a football game. Yeah, they might have something to say about that. They might not be too happy. <laughs> if it was years past, if you're playing in previous years when there wasn't so much light on it with other podcasts and guys recording it, maybe you could get away with it and that you say, "I oh, know I wasn't there." Yeah, because no one would yeah. have any video evidence. No, I just I just show up one day and just be there. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, there's Sam. Yeah. Yeah, Helmet. Just, just pads. Want to play? Yeah, grand. Um, but currently, actually, you're over. Like I said, in Nottingham, the University of Nottingham, playing um football there. How has uh how's the season gone with you so far with them? I mean, great. We've gone undefeated regular season. Just won the quarterfinals two weeks ago. I'm going into the semis this Sunday against Durham. And you know it's not it's not been a perfect season like by any means, but we just made it work. Um, had so many hurdles, so many ups and downs, but you know this team is so good. We just always find a way to win. So I'm excited going to the semis and hopefully facing Yuri in the finals in the third year in a row. Uh, so for the the league structure itself, then with with the University of Nottingham, then it is sort of just colleges against colleges. There's no sort of Baffet involvement at all, is there? No, it is just uh, universities and colleges against each other, which is quite nice. But um, I also like the way Ireland's structured, the way universities can play um, clubs. I think that's quite uh, quite fun. But at one point, it would be nice to have Ireland just universities, so if we get it more popular, and have a, a university league as well as a, a senior men's league. Well, there's definitely enough, large enough universities to do it. Uh, now, I know, unfortunately, we've had the mm-hmm. withdrawal of Trinity in the last few years, but like, but the success of UCD and now UL too, if something like you got a huge college in Galway, you've got a few up, up north, especially Belfast um, too, uh, DCU down here as well. There's there's loads of colleges that could, that could definitely make a decent league out of it rather than just that one 
inter varsities weekend that they have a year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's something completely different to you playing for a university compared to a, a club. Like everyone just spends so much time with each other at uni, um, see each other like every day. So, I mean, don't get me wrong, the connections I made at the nights uh, is amazing, and I love all those guys still. But there's something just different when you're in a university, university environment. Yeah, absolutely. It, it's kind of as close to, you know, a pre- professional environment uh, as you're going to get, you know. Obviously, there's no knock on, you know, the, the amateur side of it over here. You know, it's great that you still have that sort of, like you said, camaraderie, you still have that sort of, you know, closeness. But when you're in a college, especially like yourself, when you're over there living 24-7, you sort of have that, um, you know, extended sort of training camp feel, if you know what I mean. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I live with um, football players next year. I'm living in a house full of football players. Like, all your time is just football, but um, everyone makes such a close bond about it. It's like, yeah, it's a completely different feeling. I don't know how you'd replicate it outside of university. Mm-hmm. I know, it, it is tough. And I guess it's easier, you know, because... You know, the your university is backed obviously by the the college itself, and mm-hmm. you know the funding in that way. So if there is a time that it, it you can get to a place where the clubs here are backed and funded, maybe that can happen. Mm-hmm. But look, that that's things to, to to look forward to in the future, and, and like that with the growth of the game and with the likes of yourself heading abroad, you know, flying the flag over there with previous guys that have uh, gone abroad, uh, guys that are currently there, you know. You know, Sean McFay is probably one of the most popular ones over there now going in, mm-hmm. in Zurich. The, the lads at the Combine last week kicking for Ireland as well. Dan Whelan in the NFL last season. The more eyes they get on this island and showing that we can actually play American football, I think that's when we can start getting, you know, people interested in growing the league in, 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 in a professional manner. And, you know, we won't get Joe Flacco investing in a local league of ireland soccer club will get them <laughs> investing in, a, in yeah. an ireland american football team hopefully yeah i mean those guys paved the way sean and uh, i know tommy for the uh munich ravens like mm-hmm. um, i was actually talking to sean the other week about it because i was so close to going to switzerland i know we, we would have got to play against him um but no i i really look up to those guys and see what they could do and you know my, my goal is to be like the next step so the younger guys right now can kind of look up to me and me and Lopez and all these good like young Irish players who are going out of Ireland to play ball. Something for them to look look up to and see that there is paths with the sport that can you know you can live your dream. Absolutely, absolutely, and and that's it's it's really becoming that sort of reality, um, um now and like that we we going over now to to Sweden. It's, you know, do you have a sort of next step you want to go to after that is there a you know an eye on you know elf is there a lot is there an eye on going across this uh, across the pacific you know do you have an idea in mind of what you want to do um the elf is definitely is definitely something to look forward to you know i've played with guys he's like lewis thomas he's one of the two-time elf all-star you know he's like i learned so much from him i still talk to him so I've seen the work that he does to get there, and obviously, eyes are on that for the future. But um, right now, I'm just like focused for Sweden, going the best season I can, and I'm just going to take it one step at a time. Yeah, yeah. Um, like that now. Obviously, your focus will be on on Sweden this year. Will you keep an eye on things closer to home and seeing how the league is because? We were just like again. I mentioned talking off air. We were we were chatting and uh, I mentioned that I, I was doing a little bit of tape study and uh, I was looking back at the AFI redesigned um, highlights package. Uh, shout out to to Owen on on his work there between the Knights game last season and the Cowboys. And I wasn't expecting actually to. Uh, I didn't think actually you were going to be playing that game. I thought you you weren't playing with them. But then I just see that. University of Nottingham helmet pop up for sure uh, pop up in the middle of of the video package um and we were just chatting about that game um and just the the sort of conditions you had to play in um 27 degrees which is kind of unheard of in Ireland but it's something that you might have to get used to going over to Sweden 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, it was unexpected, especially being in Ireland. Like, no, no one expected that sort of weather. But I mean, it's just, it's just another one of those things that makes football so fun. The, the the changes that happen every single time. You know, you can't you can't predict. You know what's going to happen, but um, definitely made it fun for sure. And I, and I love the night. And that was such a fun game. It was such a fun season. I, it was, and and look, it, it was fantastic. That was kind of the game, wasn't it? Really, to see which team was going to sort of stay up last season too. Um, and in the end, it, it was very convincing. Um, I think what was it like forty three eight or something in the end or something, something like, that. like that. Yeah, yeah. Um, if you had to sort of pick one player on the Knights roster to bring with you over to Sweden, who would it be? Uh, that's, that's tough. This, this, I mean, I don't think the record didn't show it last season, but we've so many good players in that team. Um, so many just, just even at the O line position, there's like some, some of the best Irish offensive linemen come from the Knights. I mean, Moody is just like the most destructive force you'll ever see. Um, we got Thomas. I know um, Reggie's still there. Reggie just switched to D line, unfortunately, though, which is which is not great. But if I had to bring one, I might have to be Moody, just for the, just for the sheer violence and destruction that Ron brings with him. He's a uh, he's so much fun <laughs> to play with. Um, yeah, yeah it's Moody probably. Yeah, I think there was uh, over the summer there was a. Um... A wolfhound's clinic, a positional clinic, and and I I went to go to it myself, and um at one stage they put me up against one of your one of the knights guys, I think it was Robbie, um yeah, Alexander, Rob. and my God, like I, I'm I'm five seven, right, so I'm undersized for a lineman as it is, but seeing this lad go up against me, and then he, instead of staying out a tackle, he crashed in on me, and I saw him coming in and. Just, there's nothing I could do. I just prayed and hoped it wasn't going to hurt me. What, what are you, what are the knights, coaching staff or whoever doing to you lads to make you so fucking huge? Because all of you are like even I've yeah. seen, like even the likes of Reggie and and even Spence as well. I don't know what it is. I think it might, it might not even be the size. Yeah, we're big guys, but I think the way the way the coaches are, the way the culture is, it's just we play old school, hard hitting football like. He big, smart, everyone on the team that just hits. And as we're training in, training, training hurts, like training's physical, but we always get better. And, you know, it is like, it is kind of going back to old school football. And it's nice, especially as a lineman. I mean, it's no, no one likes being hit by, by Robbie. He's too big, but it, it just becomes, everyone gets such good experience when everyone's on the same page and everyone's violent and everyone just gets better. Yeah. Um, I, like I said, like I, I was saying there, about looking ahead to this year, um, you know, with the with the nights, um, the the Belfast nights. I'm sorry, sticking with there. Um, I don't know if you've gotten to spend any time with them over the the last year after the season finished. But what are your sort of hopes, or do you know what are the sort of expectations for the team this year in terms of, you know, what do they what are they looking to achieve? You know, um, I think it's just building on what we had as foundations last year. I mean, the, the record doesn't show how close we were. I mean, we were, um, I think we were up against the Rebels at halftime at one point. I think a lot of our losses against big clubs in Ireland were, you know, one and two scores at times. I think we were up. Like, I think we're so close to being in contention with the likes of Rebels with UCD. Um so I think it's just finding that little missing piece that we need, you know, um, keep grinding, keep building on what is already a solid foundation. And what I've seen from behind the scenes is it's going to be an exciting season for sure. There's some there's some changes, but there's also some like, yeah, some exciting things that's going to come for sure. Yeah. Um, and look, you spent some time um, last summer, obviously, with the uh, the wolfhounds um mm -hmm. especially in their the under 20s wolfhounds with their with their games and you know do you sort of have chats with the guys about setting up like you said you had a, a what was it a, a euro page set up that to, for your mm -hmm. highlights have you sort of given the guys that sort of advice of how or have they come to you looking for advice on how to sort of move their uh, footballing career forward yeah, I've talked to uh, quite a few of the, the under-19s. Um, 
I'm, I'm trying to get them all from the Nottingham. You know, I think this is the best place. <laughs> the university sets aside a lot of resources for us and facilities to get better. Um, and I keep telling them, like, the next step, you've got to work hard. And then the next step is, is trying to get the uni. I think um, it's, it's so easy. The, the transfer from Ireland to university isn't a massive jump. So you can kind of get in and get into the group quite quickly. And then once you're in that group, it's just it's so easy to just be consistent here, especially with our coaches. We've got some of the best coaches in the UK. You know, we have the the private gyms and the SNC coaches. And, you know, I'm trying to get as many guys out here as possible just, just for the sheer um, amount of improvement that I've seen myself. I know it's going to help uh, loads. I know this, we got some guys coming in September and then hopefully some more guys coming next year. So I'm just trying to get more Irish people out here because – Mm-hmm. people don't understand how, how talented that Ireland team is I mean they lost to uh, SGS by one score um, I think we were three or four scores down against Premier School in Naples that's a I mean they've got like uh, D1 players on their team and we, and we were so close to, to um, yeah. so close to beating them so I think there's so much potential so I'm just trying to get more more eyes on Ireland in general yeah so you're saying private gyms and, and a lot of resources. Are they taking a 32-year-old five foot seven lineman on as well? If you're trying to get a master's degree or PhD, I'm sure I'm going to sort something out. <laughs> no bother, no bother. Just try and convince my missus that I have to go over for a couple of years. That, yeah, that's, the real, uh, that's the real that's the real challenge. But um, we opened it up to a fan question or listener questions. And the, the fact that we were talking about the... Uh, the University of Nottingham, um, your head coach, Jason Scott, came in one. Um, and kind of along the lines we were talking about, actually, does he have any friends who want to wear green and gold? And if you could point, say, I'm gonna, I'm sorry to put you here on the spot a little bit, but if, if you want to do it from the Knights or if you want to do it from um, the under-19s, Wolfhounds, you can too. Give me one player on offense and one player on defense that you'd be... A, that you would love to see head over to where you were now and see if they could develop their game. Yeah, it's so tough. I mean, I might so get many. you in a little trouble. I'm sorry for that. Yeah, there's so many good. There's, there's one guy I've been talking to. I really want to get out. He's so much potential. Connor Hoskins from the South Dublin Panthers. You know, oh I, yes, I played, yeah, yeah. I played against him for two years when I played youth, and then I played against him in senior ball, and then I played with him on the under-19 Wolfhounds, and he just is like, he's so, he's got so much talent already that I'm really trying to, I'm really trying to get him out here. Um, because I think this is the best place for him to be. We've got so many good running backs. Um, I think, yeah, Connor Hawson is the guy I want to get out. And on defense, defense is hard because, I mean, it's the Knights on defense, man. It's a Ben and Isaac from the Knights and them too. So much potential. Okay. Like under nineteens, they played so well. I think Isaac might have got defensive MVP. I think for the under nineteens, like that guy's crazy for how little experience he has. He just knows, he just knows the game already. And Ben too. Ben works so hard, um, yeah. so naturally he just knows what's going on, and he, he's a good leader too. So I think being them two in the I, I can't choose between them two. That they'll they'll hurt me. Oh, okay, that's grand. That's all right. I won't make you choose one because I'm kind of already sticking your neck out a little bit there, so I won't uh, I won't get you to do anymore. We got another one there from um. I'm very I'm very sorry in advance if I'm butchering the pronunciation now. Of this, but um, uh, Kahir Harper. Yes, Kahir, uh, yes, from the Knights. Yeah. Uh, who was your most influential coach you worked with? Uh so he's he's wants he wants me to say him. Um... <laughs> But you know, you know, the most influential moment I had as a youth player was my first game back in 2019 against Dublin Rebels. And I was like, I was like breaking. I was so nervous. I'd only had a couple of training sessions before this and I had to start. And then Moody pulled up with a full McDonald's. And I knew in that moment that I, I was in the right place to play O-line with my O-line coach showed up with a McDonald's on game day. And, you know, then that was one of those influential moments. Like, yeah, this is, this is where I want to be. This is it. <laughs> True staple of any lineman's diet for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, especially on you for getting on the bus before a long journey. Yeah. McDonald's yeah. breakfast for sure. Um, let's just take a, a couple of steps back 
Um, and let's talk about actually you, first of all, getting involved in the game for American football. How did you come across uh, American football in Ireland and, and what got you interested in wanting to start playing? Um, well, I, well, I would just watch football and played Madden, you know, when I was younger. And then I had a friend at secondary school who uh, was playing on the nights at the time. So we, we just talk American football all the time, me and him. And then he said he was playing and he thought I should come join. So I joined kind of like halfway through the season. Um, but yeah, really it was, it was him telling me to come, to come down that kind of started everything. So. Okay. Um, playing Madden, then who, who's your NFL team that you support? I saw the Seahawks. Now, before you answer, before you answer, right, it could determine whether or not I end the interview straight away if you make the wrong, uh, make the wrong answer. <laughs> I'm only messing. Sorry, uh, go ahead. It has, has to be the Seahawks. I mean, the first Madden I played was the 25 like anniversary one, and I was like Prime Legion of Boom, Richard Sherman, Cam Chancellor, all those yeah. guys. And then you just YouTube it, and all just like hitting so hard, and Russell Wilson's like doing this magic, like it was, yeah. it was perfect timing with the pink Seahawks and got me into it. See, Sam, I knew there was a reason why I thought you were going to be a good guy on the show today. I knew there was a reason, and yeah. look, Seahawks just steal it. it. Seahawks just steal it. Um, tough day though for Seahawks fans yesterday with all those uh, releases, yeah, especially with Jamal it. and Quandre. Um, I love Quandre Diggs, man. I love him, but yeah, it's gonna hurt. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money that they had to free yeah. up. And hey, look, it's a, it's a whole new regime, new head coach. It's 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 strange. It yeah. is going to be strange not seeing Pete Carroll on the sidelines there at the first game uh, now next season for, yeah. for sure. I I think John Schneider could though again. I mean, I don't know what he's going behind the scenes, but he somehow flipped the whole team to be like one of the youngest teams, but so much potential. I think one of the new coaches. It might, it might be a rough year, but I think it only goes up, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Have you had the chance to uh, see them? Not live, no. I want to, though. No. Uh, that's, that's, no. no. What was it? It was Germany last two years ago, and uh, I didn't actually get to go to Germany now, but when they were in London, I got to go and see them in London, and, and um, it is it is great. Hopefully, I don't think they actually have a game opponent schedule that are playing in London this year. I the, no, the, that, I'm wrong. The Bears. The Bears is who they are playing, meant to be playing the Bears. So we'll fi- keep fingers oh. crossed. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. But um, like I said, we're going to wrap up uh, soon, Sam. Um, like I said, it, it's, it's been great chatting to you. Um, I wish you the best of luck in Oro. Um, hopefully um, t- things go great. And hopefully, you know, there is um, there's a, a, some playoffs in the future, not just with the University of Nottingham also over there. Um and hopefully if you if you get the chance to come over for come home for a game or two, we'll uh, we'll catch up in person and maybe get get, uh, get a beer. Yeah for sure. That sounds great. Um good luck yeah. your season two. I know things are about to kick off there in Ireland so I'll keep an eyes on that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, if you want the second team after the Knights to to support this year, be a Rhinos fan. That's what you want. Yeah. I want to be a Rhinos fan okay. this year. <laughs> well, like I said, Sam, it's really, really good to chat with you. And um, like I said, we will definitely catch up in the near future. That's where we're going to wrap up this edition of the show. Thanks again to Sam. If you haven't already and you're watching this on YouTube, like this video and subscribe to the channel. Follow Sam's progress on his uh, Instagram account. Sam, where can we find you on Insta? Um, just Sam Potter on Instagram. Um, yeah. Excellent stuff. Um, and follow us on Instagram if you haven't already as well, at UnderCenterPod. Same on Twitter too if you want to do it there as well. You can also listen to this back wherever you want through the podcast platform. Just search Under Center Podcast wherever you get them and you'll find us there. But until next week when we will have a review of week two of the AFI season, stay safe and we will see you soon.